Hello there and welcome back to Let's Play The Legend of Heroes, Trails in the Sky, second chapter. I am the RN Genius, but you may call me Eric. And in the last episode we met Joshua. Dolls. Three in fact. They were controlled by Ren. Then our party, after beating the Joshua dolls, was put to sleep using, well, gas. And right after that, Estelle was... Well, they took her with them. We're right now on the Crimson Ark, the new base of the society. And we're about to talk to the professor. Welcome aboard the Glorious. It's been some time since we last met, Estelle. Ah, Professor Elba, I thought it was you. I'd finally remembered when I heard your voice a minute ago. Cassius Bright's daughter continues to impress. The seal on your memory wasn't particularly strong, but throwing it off on your own is still worth some manner of praise. My apologies. I've yet to properly introduce myself. My true name is George Weisman. I'm one of the Anguiz supervisors of the society. An Anguiz. So you're like one of the high commanders of the society? Hmm, something like that. Now, as I said before, I am completely prepared to answer any questions you may have. What would you like to ask first? Honestly, there's so much to ask, I'm not even sure where to start. You needn't fret. Take your time thinking things over. If it pleases you, I could play a relaxing attitude while you collect your thoughts. Yeah, I think I'll pass. You know, you don't strike me as someone who'd be into that sort of thing. Well, whatever. Here's a question for you. Was the whole poor archaeologist thing a total act, or what? <laughs> Putting the poverty aside, I actually am an archaeologist. And as, a, as an aside, I picked up the pipe organ, uh, pipe organ during my time with the church. I may not be that Erebonian you, uh, I, may not, I may not be that Erebonian you spend so much time with, but I dare say I'm decent, wouldn't you? Hang on, the church? Like the Zetian? I was something of an academic priest academic priest. A chance meeting with the Grand Maester led to my, me discarding the path of faith. My knowledge of artifacts, paltry as it is, still proves useful from time to time, thankfully. With our current plan in particular. Hmm. The one who tempted Colonel Richard into starting a coup? The one who arranged the, all the gospel experiments? It was you? It certainly was. And it was all for the sake of our cause. Your gospel plan. I saw something in the research facility about that. Your plan is to take the aureole, isn't it? Take the aureole? That's not entirely accurate. But for the purposes of this, this conversation, it will suffice, yes? What is the aureole anyway? Why do you want it so bad? I know it's said to be the one, one of the treasures of Ideos, but just what is it? Ah, for a moment I must keep the exact nature of the Oriola secret. I would, after all, I would, after all, so hate to spoil the surprise. The surprise, right, thanks. Our plan has moved into its third phase. Very, very soon now its true nature will be plain to see. <laughs> I can barely contain my anticipation. Hmm. 
and once the aureole has shown itself, then, then we will see the potential of mankind unfurl before our eyes. The potential of mankind. Ragnar said something about that too. Oh, the holy beast was willing to bestow his wisdom upon you. Perhaps you are doing more than simply living in your father's shadow. Spare me the flattery. What the hell, I keep asking you things and you keep dodging the answers. Do forgive me, it wasn't my intention to be so evasive. I can, however, easily answer the question I know you want to, to ask most. The what? What keeps you from asking it? Don't be afraid, muster your courage and ask it of me. <laughs> Joshua, where is Joshua? <laughs> His exact location is currently unknown to me. From what I've observed, he's up to something with those sky bandits. Their movement has proven to be quite elusive. Though he is alive and well, I can assure you. Okay. Joshua's specialties are covert operations and guerrilla warfare. I was the one who tuned, tuned him to excel at such, but he was long since he has long since surpassed even my greatest expectations. <laughs> I gleefully await seeing the height of his potential. You... Come now, you needn't look so angry. When Joshua was entrusted to my care, his heart was akin to a glass ornament dashed against the paving stone. He was my first attempt at rebuilding such a shattered soul. It is not natural, you think, for an academic to be curious about the result of his work? Hmm? What did you tell Joshua on the day of the Queen's birthday celebrations? I merely removed the block of his, on his memory and told him the truth. That he, once taken into your home, had unwitt unwittingly b been acting as a spy and sending guilt and frame information to the society. That Richard's crew succeeded in its own right because of him, and finally that, thanks to his efforts, the ground was at, all, at last fertile for our plan. I even rewarded him. I formally re released him from our from his obligations to the society. Yeah. I finally get it. Why Joshua that night? Why he disappeared? Why he said goodbye with that look on his face? Hmm. Yes. I must say I did find that regrettable. To think Joshua would abandon you so coldly after regaining himself. I recommended he just pretend he knew nothing of it and continue his life with you, but alas. I suppose my generosity backfired, no? I'm amazed. I'm amazed you can even say that. You were the one who chased Joshua into a corner in the first place. He didn't have a choice. So he had to, to look like that and give his harmonica to me. And say goodbye, Estelle. All f all of it. Every last bit. It's all your fault. Ah. Hm. Löwe. The hell did you come from? I was here from the start. You simply didn't bother to notice. What a not dignified performance. You performed so well in completing my challenges, too! Did I not teach you to think before you act? Come on, give her some credit. It takes balls to pick a fight with him. Agreed. Regardless of her skills, her courage certainly is impressive. Though I wonder if we should call it courage or mere foolishness. Oh, crap. <laughs> So you're the Divine Blade's daughter. This would be the first time we've met. I'm Enforcer Number Zero, Campanella the Fool. Nice to meet you. Another one? Stop it, guys! You're scaring us, Estelle! Ren 2. You don't need to worry, Estelle. I know what I said last time, but we aren't here to hurt you or anything. Promise. Huh? Hey, Professor! Why not ask Estelle right now? 
Well, now is as good a as time as any. How about it, Estelle? Would you like to join Ouroboros? Uh... What? I'm sorry, I misheard that. Would you say that one more time? I asked if you would like to join the Society for Ouroboros. You wouldn't become a full-fledged enforcer right away, of course. You would be more a candidate for the position. Whoa, 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 whoa. Are you insane? Come now. It's hardly the leap of logic you're thinking. Joshua has been rather stubborn about returning, but with you here, he would undoubtedly come back to us. And to you. Oh. <laughs> Estelle, you want to see Joshua again more than anything else, right? If you join us, that'll come true right away. What's there to even think about? But, but, I... Now, Ren, Estelle might need some time to weigh her options. We will be de departing the ship for a little of while on business, Estelle. You may give us, give us your answer when we return. And I do apologize for this, but your options must remain fairly limited during your stay. Feel free to request anything you need, but you'll be staying in your cabin. If I join the society, I'll meet Joshua again. That's all but guaranteed. Besides, I don't have to join them for real, right? I can just, like, pretend to join them and learn more about how they operate. I'm not the best actress in the world, so it might be hard, but it's better than just being locked up. Hmm. No, that's stupid. That isn't the way I do things. Pardon me. Huh? You. <laughs> no need to be on guard. I have no intention of harming you. So if you try something like that little stunt of yours earlier, I may have no other choice. Yeah, well, sorry. What are you doing here anyway? Weren't you guys going out somewhere? The professor and the others are the ones who will be advancing the plan. I'm staying behind and minding the glorious. What is it you people are planning on doing? If you wish to find out, why not accept the professor's invitation? You'll learn most of our plans if you do. <laughs> it seems you have your answer, but you're still hesitating, aren't you? Um, if you want my, still, uh, my advice, Estelle Bright, you are not suited for the Society of Robros at all. In both ability and personality. Man, do you have to be so completely blunt about it? Don't misunderstand me. The potential for this necessary skill is within you somewhere. But your personality... You have too little darkness within you to be part of Robros. Darkness? All those in service to the Grand Maester bear some kind of darkness on their shoulders. Myself, the Professor, the other Enforcers. Joshua too, needless to say. Hmm. Hey, what's your relationship to Joshua anyway? Our relationship? Joshua was weirdly focused on you. He seemed to know who you, are, who you were, and even though he didn't recognize you with that mask on. And on top of that, it seemed like he was desperate to find out who you were. That doesn't surprise me. The professor sealed part of his memory away. He was hypnotized in such a way that the moment he left the society, he would remember little about us. Even if he remembered his actions as part of the society, he could not remember his confederates. That would have been the core of his dilemma. That's... The memories of his childhood would be the same. Even if he remembers Karen, he likely would have only loosely remembered me. I see, so that's why. Wait, Karen? I've heard that name before. Hmm. Karen is stray, a childhood friend of mine and Joshua's older sister. She died ten years ago. What? 
That harmonica you have was originally Karen's. Joshua held on to it as a memento. And then it was passed on to you. Joshua had an older sister? <sighs> how... How did Karen pass away? I hope you know what you're... I hope you know what you're really asking. The answer to that question requires star staring into the abyss in which Joshua and the rest of us reside. And it will stare back. Are you prepared for that? Tell me. I don't know if I'm ready for what's coming or whatever, but... I want to know what kind of path Joshua has followed. If nothing else, I have to know that. As you wish. It was a little over ten years ago. Back then you could still find the village of Hamel on maps of Erebonia and Liberal. Hamel was a tiny little place. There weren't many other young people, so the three of, the three of us were always together. I dreamed of becoming a bracer and I spent my free time practicing my swordsmanship. Karen and Joshua would watch and encourage me. That was how we willed, will wild away the days. Once I was done with practice, we would turn, to our e e we would turn our ears to Karen's harmonica. Karen could play anything on that harmonica, anything, but my favorite was always the old Erebonian folk song, The Whereabouts of Light. It seemed like that bliss would last forever. We believed that. We had no reason to doubt it. That day dawned and began just like any other. And then they came. A band of invaders, garbed in black and armed with Liberalian weaponry, came, out, came from nowhere. They encircled the village and slaughtered everyone in sight. None were spared. Not the old and infirm, not the young and defenseless, not even infants. Those who were killed quickly in the opening moments were the luckiest by far. And the women. Even in this telling there are some things I will not recount. We fled desperately from that hell. We were lucky to be in a position to escape when the attack began. We fled for the outskirts of the village. The screams of our own families uh, carried to our ears on the wind. Once we'd gotten to the outskirts, I told Karen and Joshua I would act as bait to confuse any pursuers. I promised them I would catch up to them soon and send them away, uh, send them ahead. But the attackers, they had laid their plan ve plans well. They had people in position to deal with any who tried to flee. When I'd finally caught up to them, the scene was strangely quiet. A man, dead, shot through the throat. Joshua with a gun in his hand, dumbstruck. And Karen, holding Joshua with a horrific wound in her back. She was barely breathing at that point. Even now, the scene seems surreal to me. Karen was calm and content. She entrusted her harmonica to Joshua, then asked that I take care of him. And then she died, quietly, there in that cleaning, clearing. <gasps> what? Why on? Why did that? The Empire invaded Liberal almost immediately afterwards. A defenseless little village, its inhabitants slaughtered by men with Liberalian arms. It was almost too perfect an excuse to, to invade. It can't be Liberalian troops doing that? When the local garrison found us, they were adamant, they were adamant the invaders were Liberalian. When the war ended a few months later, with the Empire's defeat, however, we were given a different tale entirely. They told us instead that a band of Jaeger dropouts had turned to pure brigandry. And they told us to never speak of anyone else of the, uh, to anyone else of the attack. The Erebonian authorities announced that Hamel had been destroyed in a landslide, and all rounds leading there 
were to be uh, all roads leading there were to be closed completely. Uh, uh, hold on, what? Why would they lie about that? Neither explanation makes any sense. That's almost like... <laughs> Indeed, everything was a fabrication by the warhawks of in the Empire to justify the invasion of Liberal. At the end of the war, the ruse was discovered and the Imperial government was thrown into a panic. They conceded to a comprehensive peace and executed nearly everyone involved in the plot, all to pretend that it never happened. That is still bright, is the tragedy of Hamel in full. That was also when Joshua's heart was broken entirely. He was now burdened with the torturous death of his sister, his parents and everyone he knew, and even the shock of taking another man's life. How could that not shatter the soul of a six-year-old child? You've likely heard the rest from Joshua. His spirit was so wholly broken that he lost all will to do anything but play the, that harmonica. He began to waste away. That was when the two of us were found by Weisman. To save Joshua's life, I'd entrusted him to Weisman's care and threw myself into a Robo's training. And then, two years later, Joshua, repaired as he was by Weisman, followed the same path. This is darkness, Estelle Bright. Do you understand what sort of gulf separates you and Joshua now? Do you understand what he stares into every day? I... I do, yeah. Now I think I really understand why Joshua left. Huh? Hey, next time you see him, tell Weisman thanks, but no thanks. I'll never join Ouroboros. It's not because I like or dislike the society. But as long as I'm going to pull Joshua back over that gulf you mentioned... But as long as I'm going to pull Joshua back over this, that gulf you mentioned, forget it. Hmm. Although I do feel kind of bad about letting Ren down after she went through all this trouble to invite me. Hey, you think she'll forgive me if I say I'm sorry? <laughs> You're one of a kind, Estelle Bright. To hear those horrors and thus lose your hesitation? You truly are more than just the daughter of the Divine Blade. Ah, thanks for the compliment, I guess. And you say all that, but you care about Joshua too, right? You guys were friends. Or maybe more like brothers. Hmm. Let me be absolutely clear. That was ten years ago. To me now, he is nothing more than a rogue element to be eliminated. What? The professor seems to enjoy letting Joshua do as he pleases. I have a different plan, on, plan in mind. Sooner or later I will deal with Josh, Joshua personally. Wait a second, what the hell is this? Karen asked you to take care of him. Doesn't that mean anything to you? I have my own path I've chosen for myself. I've dedicated myself to my goal and any who stand in my way shall die by my blade. Not even Karen's final request will stop me. How can you? Uh. Those are the professor and the others, yes. It looks like the third stage of the plan is getting underway. The third stage. What's... <laughs> that is not for you to know. Once we're finished, you'll be returned to your father. Behave until then. Now, just a... As one final note, don't even think of attempting to escape. The Glorious is 8,000 arch above ground. You have nowhere to run. Hmm. Don't even think of attempting to escape, he says. As if he doesn't know that it's human nature for me to want to do it the exact opposite. Besides, he's the only enforcer on board. 
All right, why not? Let's do this. Okay, the timing's gonna be everything. If I can figure that out, I'll be good. Let's see. I'll wait a couple hours until they let their guard down and then... Right, it's worth a shot. So, this was a memento of Karen, huh? You shouldn't throw away something this uh, th like this so easily, you idiot. Hey, time to change shifts. How's the girl acting? Ha, ah, quiet as a mouse. She might be a bracer, but she's still just a kid. Probably curled up in bed, scared out of her mind. Tch, babysitting here while everyone else is out sucks. This is so boring, I wanted to get out there into, into the action. Quit your whining, these are Leonard's orders, and hell if I'm not gonna follow his instruction to the letter. Huh? What was that sound? Hey, what are you doing? You don't think... She escaped? Damn it! That stupid girl! Does she not get where she is? Is she trying to kill herself or something? Hmm? Ah, Johanna, take me right now. She probably fell. You've got to be kidding me. What are we going to tell Leonhard that'll keep us... Uh, uh, that'll let us keep our heads? That damn brat. Nothing but a load of trouble. Damn brat, huh? Durr! You! Nice try, old man. <coughs> hmm, never underestimate a bracer. First of all, don't you think that was a little rude, calling a sweet maiden like myself a damn brat? It wasn't me. I didn't call you that, I swear. Oh, you didn't. Well, you didn't correct your buddy then either way. It's nap time for you. Okay. Reinforcements are probably gonna get here really quick, so I should book it. There's gotta be some way off this boat. <sighs> and I won't give up. Not until I see Joshua. Not until I see that dummy again. You won't stop for anything, huh, Löwe? Well, neither will I. Well, why did not uh, why did they not disarm you? I wonder. Oh well, there are really archaisms in here. Oh well. Oh boy, I hope you enjoyed this episode, and I hope I'll see you in the next episode as well. Until next time, bye bye.